We're doing categorical data today. And as you um, realized in the last video, that this video could stop at any point and ask you a question. So now we're really listening and really watching. I'm not taking a grade on those questions because right now we're just learning how to do them and getting used to them. Today I am going to place in some, uh, ooh, I did sound like a robot there. I'm going to place in multiple choice questions. Maybe you'll see right away if you got it wrong or right, maybe not, so we'll see. Okay. Uh, when we talk about categorical data, we're talking about usually percent. Um, you don't need to write any of this down right now. We're just kind of reading through it. As categorical data are data that are sorted into categories on the basis of qualitative characteristics. Qualitative means um, like descriptions. Okay, you can use the mode to summarize or describe categorical data. The mode of a categorical data set is the category that occurs most often. If all categories have the same frequency, there is no mode. So our first example here is that Carl sells, oops, Carl sells <clears throat> Oh my goodness, hold on. Carl, no! Okay, Carl sells red, blue, black, white, and green shirts online. One day, Carl received orders for four red, five blue, six black, and six white, and three green shirts. So it says complete the dot plot of the orders for that day. So they've already done the red and here's the blue. So now it's time for the black and we're going to make six dots. Let me give you a hint. When you're creating these it helps if the dots are level with each other. Like all of the fourth dots need to be in the same line. Okay, And then let's do the white dots. There were one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Uh oh, I didn't get the right number of black dots. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six black, six white, and then um, three green ones. One, two, three. All right. Which shirt color or colors were the most and least popular that day? All right, the most popular, you guys, are going to be, of course, the tallest row of dots. Most popular was black and white. Black and white. And then least popular, least popular, was, um, which one, green? Aww. No sense of adventure. Identify the modes of the data. So the modes are going to be six. The mode. That's it, just six. Um, unless they want us to name the colors. The mode would be black and white. Okay. Is it possible to find the mean or median of Carl's data set? Sure, we can. The numbers that we would add together are those numbers 4, 5, 6, 6, and 3. So to find the median, we'd have to put those numbers in order first. 3, 4, 5, 6, 6. And then let's find the middle one. Okay, so our median is 5, and then to find the mean, we would add them all together, which is um, 9, 15, 21, 24, 
divided by 5 is going to give me, oh goodness, 24 divided by 5. Four and eight tenths. Part of a shirt. That doesn't make sense. All right, so the median would be the best one to go with here. Let's look at this math talks question. Right here, could the colors in the dot plot be displayed in a different order? Would this change the overall results? In other words, could you have the red over here and maybe the green right here. Is that going to change your results? No, it won't. The dots will be like the um, the curve of the of like this right here will look different, but that doesn't change the results or the numbers. Okay. <clears throat> Summarizing categorical data with a relative frequency table. Okay, so when we're finding relative frequency, right here, it says the relative frequency of a category is the ratio of its frequency to the sum of the frequencies for all categories. So what you do is you add them all up, and then you're going to find the percent for each one. Okay, and that's what step one says. It says first you find the sum. The sum means you add them all together. Now, sometimes it'll tell you, um, it'll ask you, or it'll tell you how many there are total. But in this case, it doesn't. So they added them up for us, and they got 25. That's really a nice, friendly number for when you're finding percent, because now they're changing each fraction into a percent. Okay, so let's do this one down here, number two. Chewy has 40 dimes, 20 pennies, 10 nickels, and 10 quarters in his coin jar. Make a relative frequency table of the coins in the jar. So the type of coin, let's go ahead and copy down this table. And let's list the type of coins. And let's see, I'm just going to put it in the same order that they have it. So there's my types of coins. And then my relative frequency, well, for dimes, it's 40 out of what? I don't know the total there. So I'm going to go ahead and add them. There's 40, 60, 70, 80. You should be able to recognize these by now. 40 is half of 80, so that's 50%. How many pennies are there? That's 20 out of 80. And when you do the little simplify like that, you get two eighths, okay? And that's equal to 1 fourth, which is 25%. Nickels. 10 out of 80, which is 1 eighth, and quarters is also 10 out of 80, which is 1 eighth, and I need to change that to a percent. So I'm going to come up here, um, Tebow, 1 eighth. All right. <laughs> There's one eight. So eight goes into, remember we treat that like it's a 10. Eight goes in 10 one time, and then we have two leftovers. When we add a zero, we don't have to add a decimal because it's already sitting up here. Eight and a 20 goes twice, that's 16. And we have four left over. Bring down the zero, that's 40. So our percent, now after you get your decimal, you use Dr. Pepper. So I'm going to go find a nice Dr. Peppery color. Hmm, maybe like that. And I'm going to move it twice. One, two, and now it's there. So that's 12 and a half percent. 12 and a half percent. So there's my relative frequencies.
Now when you use a bar graph to help you um, visualize this, to, to organize it on a graph, um, your categories, because that's what a bar graph has at the bottom, it has categories, usually like from a vote, when you voted for your favorite kind of ice cream or your favorite movie, things like that, those results are what goes on the x-axis across the bottom, the horizontal axis of your graph. And then the frequency, which is the number of people that voted for that, go on the y-axis. You see that how that says frequency right there? So you take the category, which is the instrument, and that is down here, and then um, the percent is what they're graphing. So drums had 30 percent, it goes all the way up to 30. Now let's talk about the scale of the y-axis. What are they counting by? They're counting by fives, and in case you're wondering, no, you don't have to write any of this down. They're counting by fives on this y-axis, okay? And when I look at all of my percents, that makes it easy when you count by fives because these are all multiples of five. Okay, number three says, why is it helpful to arrange the categories in the order of their relative frequencies? So that's what they did here on this one. They said the one with the highest um, relative frequency is going to be first. And the one with the lowest is going to be last. Oh, the clarinet. That's what I played when I was in band. I didn't like it. I, I like the sound now, but at the time, I didn't like it. I think I just wanted to do something else. Okay, so why is that helpful? Um, you can, I'm going to write in cursive, you can quickly Um, see which category uh, I can hear Miss Moore, can you? Which category um, I'm not liking the way this answer is coming out. You can quickly see which category was greatest, but you can see that anyway, no matter what. Greatest, next to greatest, and so on. Okay. Okay, so now I want you to go ahead and do um, the dashboard 17.5, you may begin.